Hello, welcome to the Thursday, January 4th, 2018 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Lots of talk today about uh, security vulnerability in Intel processors. Uh, this vulnerability apparently affects all recently released Intel processors going back about 10 years. Now, the issue here is how kernel memory is isolated from regular user processes. Now the problem here is that user processes do need to interact with the kernel regularly to, for example, access the network or file systems. And in order to help with that, the kernel's memory space is actually mapped into the process space of these individual user processes. But the kernel, of course, holds a lot of confidential data like encryption keys and the like. So in order to prevent normal user processes from reading kernel memory, the processor is supposed to keep the two apart by switching from user mode and to kernel mode whenever it is needed. And apparently something is going wrong with this switch in Intel processors. There are not a lot of details known yet. The details are still under embargo until all the patches have been released. But that's sort of the big picture as it's known right now. Now patches are coming out for Windows, for Linux and other operating systems. The Windows patches should be released next week with Microsoft's regular patch Tuesday. Now, these patches aren't really patching the actual problem. The actual problem in the processor apparently cannot be patched with firmware or software. Instead, it would require new hardware. So what's being released here is not so much a patch, it's really more a workaround. And what operating systems have to do now is they have to separate kernel memory and user space memory again, which removes the efficiencies that were gained by actually keeping them together. Some of the benchmarks that people have run so far are talking about decreases in efficiency of around 15% up to 30 or even 50% depends very much on the software. Typically, it's not going to affect a lot of very CPU intense software. Where this particular problem really hits you is whenever you're using the kernel, whenever you're switching from the process to the kernel, which is typically done via system calls or syscall for short. And that's the part that's going to be delayed. Now, the bad news here is that that typically happens whenever you're trying to access a file, whenever you're trying to access the network. So I expect things like databases, for example, to suffer quite a performance hit from this patch. So in some cases, you may have to make a judgment call whether or not you want to apply the patch. The security impact here is really a privilege escalation. So with this vulnerability, a normal user process will be able to read kernel memory. This, for example, will allow an exploit to bypass address space layout randomization. So existing buffer overflows and so in the kernel will be easier to exploit. And then again, it may be possible for an attacker to read various secrets like encryption keys and such from the kernel. For virtual machines, this will most likely allow an attacker to reach outside of a particular virtual machine. This is in particular critical for cloud environments. Now, if you have a standalone database and uh, if you only have really one database, one application running on it, then I could possibly justify to not apply this patch, but again, run your own benchmarks and do your own risk analysis once all the details are known about this particular vulnerability. And over the last few days, I heard about a couple of cases where large organizations, uh, PeopleSoft installs and Linux servers running WebLogic uh, were compromised and crypto coin miners were installed on these systems. It was typically the same crypto coining mining software, no matter whether it was WebLogic or PeopleSoft. So 
probably a common vulnerability here that's being exploited. They don't appear to be going specifically after PeopleSoft systems. In all cases that I've seen, the actual indicator of compromise was a high CPU usage on the system. So that's definitely something to check for. But in order to run a crypto coin miner, uh, these uh, systems then have to connect to any mining pools in order to actually reap the reward of all of their work. And to help you detect some rogue crypto coin miners, I set up a new thread feed with IP addresses of known mining pools. This is still work in progress. I will add the link to the particular list in the show notes. Any feedback would be highly appreciated. Of course, crypto coin mining isn't inherently malicious, but a lot of organizations don't actively participate in it. And it is very calmly used as part of monetizing exploited systems. And John Bambanek today looked at an exploit that very much looked like business email compromise with sort of the exception here that there wasn't really any business involved necessarily. Typically, business email compromise is a more targeted attack where an executive, someone with access to finances of a corporation is being targeted. In this case, it looks like they sort of deployed a fairly large dragnet trying to get as many email credentials as possible and then they used the access in order to inject or look for money transaction emails. In this particular case that John was able to document, someone lost $200,000 due to falling for this very simple scam. In this case, yet again, a realtor turned out to be the victim. Of course, uh, we had this documented before as well. One thing that makes realtors so enticing targets is that they usually do use consumer email accounts like your standard Gmail or Yahoo Mail account and they do deal with larger amounts of money routinely, which of course then is at risk. And of course, they tend not to be protected by any enterprise style security system that would make sure that they are patched or that they are behind any kind of filtering proxy. Well, and the zit for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.